If you follow Final Cut Pro Help on Instagram, you may have seen the daily shortcut posts. These are videos that are about 10 seconds long that show a specific Final Cut Pro 10 shortcut in action. Those shortcuts have all come from the default Final Cut Pro 10 keyboard layout. But there are many cases where you'll want to customize the keyboard to work better for you. To do that, just go up to the menu that's just called the Final Cut Pro menu at the top left corner, go down to Commands, and then there's an option to customize the commands or customize the keyboard. You can use the shortcut Option Command K to open up this window. So I'm going to click on Customize, and we get to what's called the Command Editor. Now this Command Editor can, use, can be used for a lot of different things. You can use it to search for a specific command, or you can use it to remap shortcuts to different keys. So the first thing I want to show you is that the top left corner, there's a default menu. This is showing the default command set, or the default keys. And personally, this is what I edit all of my projects with. The reason I do this is I do a lot of training, and I want to make sure that I'm using the keyboard layout that's going to be the one that you're using, which in most cases is that default command set. However, once you get used to editing a specific way, remapping the keys can be very helpful. So what I would recommend doing is going in and finding the commands that you want to remap. So for example, a lot of people do the J, K, and L editing, which if I click on the J, K, the J key, I can see what that key does. Just pressing it without any modifier plays a clip in reverse where K stops or pauses the video and L plays something forward. If I were to do Command L, I would get loop playback, or I could do Control L and I would get play forward. Similarly, if I go to J, I can see Control J is also play reverse. And the rest of these keys, like Shift J or Option J, is not mapped to any key. So if I wanted to, I can see a list of commands here, and I could take one of these commands, say like add chapter marker, has no modifier key, and I could select this and drag it onto one of these keys. Now, I don't want to just drop it because that's going to add it as a no modifier, but maybe I want this to be shift J. So I'm going to hold down shift and then drop in the add chapter markers. It's going to ask me, do I want to make a copy of the default set? Since you can't change default, and I do want to do that. And I'm going to call this my custom keyboard. Uh, keyboard. And now you'll see on the J key, if I were to click on it, it says no modifier, and it's going to add a chapter marker. I can click and drag this around, so I can change this to be shift for that uh, command there. And then I get the option, uh, essentially, to do shift J to add a chapter marker. If I wanted to, because I didn't want to actually change the no modifier, I can change play reverse, and I can put that up here as no modifier and add that one. Now, on the keyboard, at any point, you can click on any keys. I'm going to press the A key. And uh, when I do that, I'll see all of those um, uh, shortcuts essentially assigned here. You can also scroll through the various shortcuts that are available inside of Final Cut. You can use the search field at the top here to find a specific uh, shortcut. Uh, you can also go in and on the left column select a specific group of commands. So if you're not too sure what commands are available, you could go in and say click on the marking category and you'll see all of the commands that have been assigned to that marking category. And that's what all these color codes are to kind of tell you which keys are which and which ones you'd use there. So that's pretty much all there is to customizing the keyboard. You're just going to find a selection say send a compressor if you do this frequently, and then you're going to drag this onto a key to add it, or you can click in the modifier and the key here and add that specific key. So I can, in this case I just did command D for send a compressor, I can see that that's already assigned to duplicate, so do I want to reassign it to send a compressor? And yeah, let's go ahead and reassign it. So now send a compressor is command D. Uh, let's look at that one more time, I'm going to go to organize here, and there's an option to analyze and fix content. And so this has no keys assigned to it right now, but maybe I want to assign it to the S uh, key. So I'm going to hit Option, Command, S, 
click on the key there, and I'm going to reassign it to that key. So this is how you can go in and customize the keyboard and the different shortcuts that are there uh, for you, the ones that you want to actually use. All of this is great, and there's one big reason for using this. If you're an editor that works on other people's machines, you can actually go up to this Customize Keyboard menu, um, or whatever you've named it, and you can go in and export this, key, uh, this keyboard layout. So you can export your layout and then go into another machine and import that. When you do export it, it exports just a really tiny file. I'm going to put it on the desktop here. Uh, it exports this really, really small file because it already exported it. I'm going to save my keyboard there. I'm going to hide Final Cut, hide Pond 5. We're done with it. Here's the uh, key command. If I do Command I, it's 19 kilobytes. So this is taking up no space. And that's something you can then go into Final Cut and go to File, or sorry, go to Final Cut Pro menu, go to Commands, and select Import to import that custom keyboard. This way, whatever system you're working on, you can go between those systems with that custom keyboard layout. Now, this is something I would also look online. There's a lot of places that have, where people have shared their custom keyboards, and you can actually get keyboard layouts that are very similar to other applications, like Adobe Premiere or Avid Media Composer. Um, so whatever program you're used to working in, you can then customize the keyboard to be very similar to what it was in that application. Hope this tip helps out and provides you another little glimpse at another Final Cut feature that's out there. If you have any specific questions, leave a comment. If you liked the video, just add a like on there for me. And subscribe to avoid missing out on any additional content that's going to be posted to this channel. And that's all I have for today, so have a wonderful rest of your day.